um, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, find the rule by, uh, by using uh, multiplication or division. So um, I'm going to work on this one first. And you know, usually when I'm trying to find the rule, the first thing I want to look to is addition and subtraction. Um, and after I can't find addition and subtraction, I look to multiplication and division. And once I can't do multiplication and division, I look to a combination of the two. And then if I can't do that, I work on other things like squaring, square roots, cube roots, cube roots, blah, blah, blah. Um, but up here, first thing, let's look at addition and subtraction. And I see one to get to four, I have to add three. Now, does that stay true for the rest of my values? Does two plus three give me eight? No. So therefore, since that's not continue, um, you know, the same thing for every single value, I can't use the rule x plus three or any of my values add three to get to here. So now I'm gonna have to look for a multiplication. So I say, all right, if I have one to four, what do I have to do to, to one to get to four? And I say, I have to multiply by four. And let's see if that stays true for the rest of my x values. If I multiply two times four, does that give me eight? Yes. If I multiply three times four, does that give me a 12? Yes. So therefore, I can say that f of x, which is my output, is equal to whatever these numbers are. So it could be one, two, three, or to represent any one of the numbers, we use x. And to, what I need to do to x, I need to multiply it by 4. So I can just write it as 4x. Um, so this one's pretty simple to kind of see. It's when they're all in the area, when they're all you know kind of right next to each other. Here, it's a little more difficult. Um, what we have is we have these all kind of split up. We have a negatives. We have, you know, they're not together. They're not in order. They're not consecutive at all. So when I'm looking at this, again, Let's go and see if I can do, it looks like I'm gonna to have to do subtraction. Um, so I'll do, or even addition actually, it's kind of odd. So I do 10 minus five gives me, I'm sorry, 10 minus 15 would give me negative five. Does, if I do that for negative six, negative six minus 15, does that give me two? No, the answer um, doesn't work. So therefore, um, I can't do subtraction. I'm gonna to have to look to multiplication or division. Well. Since my top number, since my input values are larger than my output values, I'm gonna to have to multiply by a fraction or divide by a number. So I say, all right, well, what do I have to do to get from 10 to negative five? And you can say, well, you can divide by two, right? Um, so if I take my number and I divide it by two, it will give me negative, negative five, but it has to be a certain type of two, which was a negative two. So I gotta make sure I divide by negative two. Um, now let's see if that works for the other problems. Negative six divided by, oh, I didn't write these in right. No wonder that won't work. That has to be a three. No wonder you probably couldn't figure it out, right? Um, so negative six divided by two, divided by negative two will give me a positive three, and one divided by a negative two gives me a negative one half. So I can write this one as, instead of having f of x, we use y as our output. So y equals, um, we could say x, divided by a negative two, or you could write it as multiplication as a negative one half times x. Either one of those um, would work, but that is gonna be how you rule. So that's how you write a rule with uh, multiplication and division.